there are three types of companies when trust is concerned. First, we have those who trust everyone. Those are the companies that hope for the best. Those are the companies that do not secure their systems, either because they do not know how to do it or because they do not care. So what does that mean in the context of network policies? Well, that means that any application inside the system can freely communicate with any other application. It does not matter whether an app was deployed by one team or another. It does not matter if someone from outside our organization managed to start uh, a malicious process that tries to communicate with other apps in the system and gather information it shouldn't. Or it tries to create a denial of service attacks from inside a cluster or tries to do anything. Everyone and everything has access to everything. We trust everyone and we hope that no one will do anything bad. If you're one of those, go away. This is not a video for you. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, still waiting. Okay, so you're still here. Hence, I will assume that you do care about security at some level or another. So let's jump into the second group. Members of the second group are those who trust no one. That's what we call zero trust. I don't trust outsiders, I don't trust my colleagues, I don't trust my boss, I don't trust my company, I don't trust anyone but me. And sometimes I don't even trust myself. Now, there are many things to consider when we apply zero trust. And today's focus is on networking, or to be more precise, on Kubernetes network policies. I will not go into details how it all works because I already explored that in that video. What I do want is to talk about an important aspect of network policies. Let's take a look at a simple example stored in network policy YAML. This is easy to understand, right? Pods with a label PostgreSQL can receive traffic from other pods located in the namespace with a label environment set to demo and the pod label app set to silly demo. And here comes the important part. This and other network policies are designed to cater the needs of the owner of that specific application. What does that mean? Well, that means that I, as the owner of the application, need to enable others to be able to speak with me or with my application. If some other application wants to communicate with me, the owner of that app needs to tell me his or her intents and I will make the decision whether I want to allow that app to speak to my app. I am the arbiter of what is allowed and what is not when my application is concerned. That's actually a good approach when zero trust is concerned. By default, I do not trust anyone and you need you to change my mind. You need to earn my trust. Tell me why you want to talk to me and prove that you can be trusted. That means not only that I do not trust outsiders, but I do not trust my colleagues either. Or at least I do not trust them until they prove to be trustworthy. The downside of that approach is that all other application owners in my company need to go through this vetting process before they can communicate with my app. As you can imagine, that is bad for me and painful for everyone. Everyone needs to go through me and I have extra work on my shoulders. Everyone needs to wait until I choose to allow them to communicate with my app. Now, to be clear, I do not see any way around that. That's what zero trust means. Nevertheless, I already said that there is a third group of companies. Some are in between I trust everyone and I trust no one. Some might believe in we trust each other, but we do not trust outsiders. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that we have internal trust. It means that teams working on other applications are responsible and trustworthy. In this scenario, having to wait for the owner of an app to authorize me to communicate with his or her app is not very productive. Ideally, I should be able to state my intent and have it done automatically. 
man should be able to say my app should be able to talk to those apps and that should result in network policies automatically created without involving the owner of the destination application. The direction should be inverted. At the same time, any attempt to talk to apps that were not specified should be blocked. That's where Authorize comes in. Before we do anything, I'll generate a bit of traffic to one of the applications running in my cluster. That way, Authorize will have something to work with. So I'm going to execute DDoSify, dash T, and so on and so forth. And by the way, if you're not familiar with DDoSify, please, please, please check this video. All the requests failed. And that was to be expected. I disabled network communication between all the apps in my cluster. That is a good starting point. And now we need to enable communication between those apps that should communicate with each other and no others. Let's see how we can manage our network policies with authorized intents. We'll start uh, with the web UI. Yeah, pretty colors. The first thing we can notice here is that we have a view that shows communication paths between our applications. That is nothing special and most CNI solutions already have that. If, for example, you're using Cilium or Calico, uh, you would get a web UI that, among other things, would show us how our services communicate with each other. Heck, those solutions would even show much more than what Authorize offers. What makes Authorize Web UI special is that it is a very easy way to deduce which services are unprotected. In this case, we can see that Silly Demo App might benefit from protection. Or to be more precise, the app needs less protection because everything is already blocked by default. We need to enable traffic to talk to it. Let's see how we can do that by taking a look at an intense resource stored in intense traffic YAML. Over here, I'm specifying that the intent of traffic is to call silly demo running in the demo namespace. Now, this is a different direction from what we would normally do with network policies. A network policy is all about saying, I own this app and only those other apps can speak with me. That approach is more secured since it reflects I do not trust anyone by default and only I can decide who can speak with me. But that poses a problem since everyone in my company depends on me. Without my blessing, no one can speak to my apps. Intents assume that there is trust within an organization. It allows anyone, authorize allows anyone to state their intent and enable communication from their app to other apps. The downside of that approach is that it is less secure. It is not zero trust approach. Intents are focused on the idea that we trust each other, but we do not trust outsiders. If you need to speak with me and you have access to the cluster or to a Git repository when using GitOps, all you have to do to enable communication is to state your intent. There is no need to get the blessing from the service owner. The additional benefit is that we do not need to specify the labels of the service that we want to communicate with. Instead, all we have to do is state the name of the service and the namespace if it is running elsewhere. Now, I do not think that that's a big deal since every well-defined application has at least the label that uniquely identifies it within a namespace. But if you do silly stuff, and you do not define labels, intents, authorized intents, simplify that part of the process as well. Behind the scenes, the result will be the same as if you defined a network policy. That's what authorized does. It simplifies the process of creating network policies by allowing you to state your intent and then it creates the network policies for you. We'll see that soon. For now, let's apply the manifest and see what we'll get. So it's cube Kotlin and space is traffic appliance, so on and so forth. Now, what did we get? We can see what we get by listing all the client intents or to be more precise, let's describe traffic client intent and there is nothing exciting to see here. The interesting part is the network policy that was created based on our intents. So let me retrieve network policies. And what happened is that the intent generated a network policy 
for us. So let's take a look at it. Let's uh, do kubectl namespace demo, get network policy, whatever the name is, and I'll put it to YAML. Now, to be clear, it should be fairly easy to create that network policy without going through both arrays. Sure, intents result in fewer lines of YAML, and the network policy created by intents is longer than the one we would create ourselves, since we would not need to be so generalistic. Also, if our apps would have proper labels, authorize would not need to create labels for us. But that's missing the point. Intents are not about reduction of work. That's a side effect with limited value. The real advantage is in who does what. It's in the direction. Instead of having to wait for the owner of the service to create the network policy, we can do it ourselves. More autonomy in exchange for less security. Now, that might sound like a negative thing. I mean, who wants less security? But if you trust your colleagues, it is actually the same level of security since you would allow their apps to consume yours anyway. Now, before we move on, let's confirm that the communication was indeed enabled. And we can do that by sending a CURL request to the application. And the output complains about PostgreSQL, but that's to be expected. I enabled communication from traffic to silly demo app but I did not enable communication from that app to its database. And if I go back to authorized web UI, we can see just that. Now, let's generate a bit more traffic and see what happens. I'm going to execute the dosify with some config, and that will send some traffic to the application or applications, actually multiple applications. Again, watch the dosify video. What matters is that the result is silly demo sending requests to a few other applications and they all failed. Again, that was to be expected since all network traffic is, at least in this cluster, disabled by default. And if I would like to fix that, if I would like to enable communication between Silly Demo and its database and a few other apps, I can create yet another intents or group of intents. And this time I have it stored in intent Silly Demo YAML. Now, imagine that the Silly Demo team came along and said, we want our application to speak with a few other apps. So that team created the intent that does just that. It specified that the service Silly Demo should call the database PostgreSQL as well as applications APP1 and APP3. Remember this, APP2 is not on this list. You will see how that what's the result of that later. Now, let me apply that by executing kubectl apply and so on and so forth. And let me retrieve all the network policies with kubectl get network policies. Now, this time I got a number of network policies. And let's go back to Autorez UI and see what we can see there before I come back to the terminal. We can see that traffic is now enabled from silly demo to the database and to a few other apps. APP1 and APP3 are there, but the APP2 is not since we did not enable communication from Silly Demo to that application. So does it work now? We can confirm actually whether that's true or no by repeating the request to traffic which forwards it to Silly Demo, which in turn communicates with the database. So I can send a request with URL and see how it whether it works now. And it does work. I mean there is no data in the database, so there is not much to see, but the communication is now enabled. And let, let's take a look at what's going on with the other three apps. Can we access them from Silly Demo? And we'll do that by executing the same DDoSify command that will bomb Silly Demo with ping requests to all three other apps. From the results, we can see that the steps one and three all succeeded, while all requests in step two failed. That's the step that sends request to APP2, which was not included in the intents, hence no network policy was created for it. But there's more to authorize though. Authorize can do quite a few other networking related tasks. It can, for example, automatically provision MTLS credentials. It can map Istio traffic and authorization. It can map pod to pod traffic in form of images, lists, and JSON, I think. It can simplify and secure Kafka access and a few other things. Now, we won't go through those examples. You probably get the point, right? It's networking automation tool. So instead, let's talk about pros and cons of using authorize. Think of Autorays as a tool 
or a platform that helps automation of networking related stuff. And more importantly, as inversion of the direction of network policies specifications. Whether you should use it depends on the level of security you want to apply or to be more precise on who you trust. Do you trust nothing and no one? If that's the case, you're looking into zero trust solutions and authorization is not for you. Actually, it might be since it helps automate creation of network policies and a few other things. Nevertheless, the main idea behind authorize is to invert the direction of network policy specification. You're supposed to allow owners of other apps to say that they want to speak with the app you own. That means that you trust people in your company and that it is not zero trust system. You trust someone. Then we have systems that trust everything and everyone. We'll call it full trust systems, or maybe a better name would be, we'll find out that we are wrong the hard way. Those are systems that are not really concerned about someone or something sneaking in and attempting to steal information or break havoc. I will not go into the discussion whether anyone should fall into this category, nor whether network policies are needed to prevent such outcomes, but simply state that some have unprotected systems and that in those cases, network policies are not needed. And without network policies, authorize makes little to no sense to use. There is the third category though. There are companies that want to be secured, but do not need zero trust. There are companies that trust their employees to do the right thing and that are trying to make their employees autonomous. In those cases, authorize might be a good solution. Instead of waiting for an app owner to allow your application to speak to it, you can simply state the intent to speak to that app and authorize will generate all the required network policies. The good thing is that authorize does not reinvent the wheel, at least not much. It does not implement its own network policies. Instead, it simplifies creation of Kubernetes network policies, you know, those that are baked in and inverts the direction from where they are created. As I mentioned earlier, there are other features, but I feel that they are more of a bonus than the main reason why you might adopt Autorace, at least at this early stage of the project. Now, let's jump into pros and cons. Actually, there aren't many cons besides the project being relatively new and as it's common at this stage having some rough edges. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Simplify creation of network policies with a few additional features. There aren't many things wrong with it because it's not doing much. It creates network policies and a few other things. The main questions are whether you trust your colleagues to do the right thing. And if you do, whether you feel that a new tool is needed to generate network policies. Did you feel the pain of managing network policies? If you didn't, there's no good reason to adopt Autorize. If you did, I suggest you give Autorize a try. See you in the next one. Cheers.